Hi, my name is Carla Gutierrez, and today I will be presenting over kindergarten to date. This research is based on whether or not children are coming in to kindergarten more prepared than they did before. Um, uh, the National Center of, for Education Statistics used two data sets that would compare students who started kindergarten in 1998 to those who started in 2010. Naming it the Early Childhood Longitudinal Study ESLS program. Uh, in this presentation, we will cover over the statistics and data of the research, the advantage advantages and disadvantages, and those have to do with behavioral and academic skills. According to the researchers, um, the stats show that uh, behavioral and academic skills were the main focus of comparison, uh, especially in academic skills and they were mostly focused in mathematical and literacy literacy skills, which improved a lot over in comparison from 1998 to comparison to 2010. On the other hand, behavioral skills, they decreased um, and they had a lot to do with poor self-control, focus, poor approaches to adapt in, to changes in routine. And as we can see over here, the the darker shades represents 1998 and the the uh, see-through one uh, represents 2010. Um, in the not yet stage, the, the 1988 bar is a lot higher than the 2010 one in all of these. This one says they were able to easily name upper and lowercase letters. This one reads uh, they were able to read simple books independently and they understood relative quantities and solve problems involving numbers. So these had to do with literacy and mathematical skills and in all of them the not yet stage is higher than 1998 and in the consistently stage the 2010 one is a lot higher than the 1998 one. Um, continued uh, stats also shows that the percentage of teachers who believe students should learn to read in kindergarten were a lot lower in 1998. The black bar represents 1998, and in all of them, 2010 uh, stats are higher than the 1998 one. This one says per percent of teachers who believe parents should make sure their children know the alphabet before they start kindergarten. It was 29% in 1998 and 62% in 2010. Percentage of teachers who believed it was important for children to enter kindergarten knowing how to use a pencil and paintbrush was 35% 1998, and in 2010, it was 68%. The reason being is because in uh, 2010 and even today now, um, I'm pretty sure the stats are even higher now compared to today in 2010, uh, because it's more popular for uh, parents to put their children in uh, pre-K or any other programs prior to kindergarten now than they did in 1988. And again, continued stats, this one shows, we see the difference how 1998 is now it's opposite, now it's higher, um, 1998, because these have to do with extracurricular activities, um, just electives and stuff like that. For example, this one, uh, the first one is play area, the percent of kindergarten classrooms that had a dramatic play area. So in 1998, it was 87%, in 2010, it was 58%. Uh, the second one reads, the percent of kindergarten classrooms that had a water or sand table in the classroom. Uh, it was 49% in 1998 and only 24% in 2010. The last one is percent of classrooms that had an art area in the classroom. Um, and 1988 it was 92% and in 2010 was 71%. So in all of these elective or extracurricular activities is way lower in 2010. Uh, some of these advantages of the changes that have occurred in the past years in between that uh, time slot where children who enter kindergarten today are skillfully prepared and class readiness. So when children come into kindergarten, they're ready to go. They're school ready. Um, stats, researchers uh, stated that eight children ages three and six, they knew how to count from one to 20 um, in 2010, right on the first day of school of kindergarten. They also knew the entire alphabet and as well as the sounds of, the, of each letter. And uh, in 2010, the average math score coming into kindergarten was 2.70, and in 1998, it was 2.51. In 2010, students came in knowing 17% more prior to kindergarten, and the reason being is because of, again, pre-K uh, students or other programs 
that were prior to. As far as disadvantages and contrary to uh, the advantages of this research is that children who enter kindergarten today, they have lower behavioral skills. So because they're spending so much time in the textbooks, worksheets, and lecture time, not without any movement or any engagement or being able to talk to their partner or anything, um, and also constantly being hushed into listening. Um, they have poor approaches and effort in children's ability to pay attention and participation. So children, they're not, they're not meant to, it's really rare to have a child actually listen to you when you tell them to, to, you know, to be quiet and keep calm. And especially for a long period of time, averagely a, a child should be able to sit and listen to a lecture max 15 minutes, especially if they're in kindergarten. That's, I think that's the most, that's like the range, like that's like the perfect range for a student to stay focused. After that, they get distracted and they have to do some type of engagement. Um, the race and income also occup occupied roles in the achievement gap. And this had to do a lot with, this was mostly seeing Hispanics and African Americans. Um, some of the qualities that these children uh, tend to show a lot is they are way more reserved than they were in 1998. They're not that very social. They, it's a lot harder to communicate with them and they feel more lonely and they have less interest and desire to learn. So obviously if they're coming into class every day and it's the same thing where they sit in their seat for a long periods of time without any engagement or anything fun to do, then they're not, they're going to lose interest and eventually just not enjoy school as much as they r really should. Um, some of these causes, like I said, it was a increase in time spent on academic schools, ac academic skills. So that'd be textbooks, literature time and worksheets. Um, and a severe decrease of time spent on art, music, and selected activities. So because they don't have a lot of time to do what they want or fun stuff, like to play, like the play areas, because again, they're kindergartners. They have to have playtime or sandboxes or recess or, you know, just arts and crafts time or music class, anything that has that gets them moving and just distracted off the textbooks for a little bit, it's going to make them lose interest. Okay, my thoughts on this uh, research is that I think that every student is different. Um, and so therefore, I don't think that every child should be forced to go to pre-kindergarten or any uh, programs prior to kindergarten just because everyone learns differently and everyone has different needs. Um, so if a child is forced to go to a program prior to kindergarten, sometimes they don't provide all the required necessities that every single child needs. And also every child learns differently. Uh, so when, when it comes to being in the actual classroom in kindergarten, um, not every child can sit through even a 30 minute lecture, uh, lecture time, uh, because not every, every child is uh, auditory or visual learner. Um, there's a lot of kinesthetic learners like myself. I can't sit in a classroom for long periods of times. So I have to take breaks because otherwise I get distracted and I don't want to pay attention after a certain period of time um, of being there. If there's parents who don't plan to uh, put their child in pre-k pre or any other programs prior to kindergarten, then what they can do is at least teaching the basic stuff such as counting from 1 to 20 or every letter in the alphabet just so that when they come in to kindergarten they already know that stuff but they're also not very overwhelmed by already sitting in the classroom before kindergarten. Um, on the other hand, if students are forced to attend these programs, it may, it may lead to consequences such as stress, behavioral issues, and lack of interest. Consequences may affect their academic progress because if they if a child doesn't have the desire to learn anymore, then they're just simply gonna lose interest and they're not gonna put in as much effort leading to poor uh, academic progress. As educators, it is important to keep in mind that in order for a child to be effective in their learning development, they must first be able to generally feel eagerness and excitement to learn. Otherwise, passion for learning will continue to decrease leading to a negative academic outcome. And these are my resources. <laughs> wow. <laughs>